white wig as well. <laughs> yeah. Put it on. <laughs> and then uh, give give Bentley. Actually, give Derek the Jesus wig. <laughs> he already has Jesus hair. He doesn't need a wig. <laughs> hey, so what, what's happening right now? What's happening? Laughter. There's joy. Yeah. Wholesome laughter. I did not come to Iowa City to the House of Praise Church to defile the house of God and turn it into a comedy skit. That's not what I want to do, but I want to model for you guys. I want to illustrate you guys to you guys the simplicity of teaching the gospel to kids. Because a lot of us feel unqualified. A lot of us say, Pastor Rick and, and Becky, I just don't know if I can teach Sunday school. I, I just don't know if, you mean to tell me you don't know if you can teach the Bible? The Bible is a double-edged sword and pierces. Yes, it takes a little creativity, perhaps perhaps a little um, from, from on your part. But I tell you, there is an anointing over each and one of you. There's not, it's not that Pastor Rick has an anointing and you don't. It's not that Mike has an anointing and you amen, don't. Amen. I don't have I don't have anything that you didn't that you don't that you did acquire that wasn't deposited in you when you asked Jesus to come into your yes. life. So if you feel unqualified today, I just want to model to you guys because, you know, laughter. Laughter is such a great thing. A lot of us, you know, life can make us better or bitter. Which one are you? Are you better or are you bitter? And listen, I know, I, I, I don't know what's going on in our lives. I have no clue. And I'm at 38 years of life. I haven't done everything under the sun. I haven't experienced everything under the sun. But as Darren is my witness, there's been some, some treacherous waters we've had to navigate, right, Darren? And are we better or are we bitter? We're better, man. We're better. We're better. So laughter, they say that humans, little humans, and big humans, those are almost dreadlocks, man. Uh, you know, they say that humans learn better through laughter. So if we're, if we're teaching the, the word to the kids, and they're laughing. We're making yeah. him look like E.T. in the closet. Remember that scene uh, in E.T. where yeah, yeah. he comes and he's like, and he's got a wig on. And he, uh, <laughs> people are going to laugh. And kids are going to laugh. And they're going to, the, the word of God's going to pierce right through them. They're going to go home with this. So Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Actually, honey, let's go ahead and give, um, and, and yeah, Bentley. Uh, Derek, let's go ahead and take your suit off. Just your jacket off. Yeah. And then give Bentley, uh, do we have suits? Yeah, there's suits here. Give Mr. Derek the Jesus robe. The blue one, the blue one. The robe, huh? Yeah, put it on, man. <laughs> well, it's, not, it's just uh, something you put over. And then do we have one for Bentley? We do, okay. Is there a wig for Bentley? I think there is a wig for Bentley. Yeah, go ahead and give it to him. Okay. Stop for a second. Let's turn the back. Go ahead and give the wig to him. If you're familiar with Mark chapter 10, verse 46, what are we talking about today? You're right. Go up, come over here. Have a seat. Oh, I'm asking him to come and he's blind. <laughs> have a, turn around. Have a seat right there. And Derek, could you be kind enough? Um, I forgot my cane, so I found something, Pastor uh, Rick. There's right there at the sound booth, right there to your right. I found some sort of metal rod. We're going to pretend it's a cane today. Hopefully no one gets hurt. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're right. You're right. Um, I'll just use this. Thanks. Okay, so you two come over here, uh, Bentley and, and uh, Brother Derek. I'm, uh, I'm Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hey, Rob. 
So what are we talking about today? Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Where are we reading out of? Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Where are we reading out of? Mark, Mark. Mark chapter 10, <laughs> verse 46. Awesome, awesome. I'm thinking about other things right now. Okay. okay. So we're going to read this. It says, Now they came to Jericho. Who are they? Uh, they, the disciples, Jesus, were coming into Jericho. So this is going to be Jesus, and Bentley's going to represent the disciples. But not only that, he's going to represent a crowd of people. He went out of Jericho with his disciples in a great multitude. A great what? Multitude. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Caleb, I need you to put out your right hand and act like you're begging. There you go. He's just he's just there hoping that people give him some some money or anything that could help his life. So who was who was sitting on the side of the road begging? Bartimaeus. So I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat myself a lot, but this is part of injecting the kids with the word of God, which is if they don't go home with the word of God, everything we do is in vain. Amen. Okay. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, and Caleb, you're going to repeat after me. He began to cry out and say, Jesus. Jesus. Louder because he was crying out. He's in a crowd of people. He wanted to make sure Jesus heard him. Jesus. Jesus. Son of David. Son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Then many warned him. Many warned him to be quiet. You guys are going to be the many. So I'm going to have him cry, cry out again. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And as soon as he says that, you guys go, be quiet. Here we go again. Caleb. Jesus. Jesus. Son of David. Son of David. Have mercy on me. Be quiet. Again. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Oh. See, in life, we're going to have a lot of people who try to shut us up. This world is trying to drown our voices Amen. as Christians. Constantly, constantly opposition, adversity in this world through the media, in our neighborhoods, at our schools, from all different angles. The world is trying, Satan and his, and his kingdom of darkness is trying to drown out our voices. Are we going to let him? No. no. Do you think Bartimaeus let the crowd get to him? No. no. Bible says but this actually fueled Bartimaeus it says but he cried out all the more again son of David, son of David. have mercy on have me mercy on. so then Jesus and his disciples were walking go ahead and walk 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 stop the Bible says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Come here, come here, Caleb. I mean, Bentley. Jesus, tell Bentley, go get him. Go get him. So, so he. Good job. <laughs> he's improving, man. That's awesome. Hey, that's not in the Bible. Um, so, it says Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then, they called the blind man saying to him come over here you're going to tell you're going to tell Bartimaeus be of good cheer be of good cheer, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Rise. rise he is calling you he's calling you so grab his hand and Bartimaeus stand up okay now uh, Bentley you're going to lead him back to Jesus Okay, lead him back to Jesus, but you gotta use your cane. Remember, he's blind. You're blind. And you're using your cane. Okay. Sometimes we're gonna require the help of others to get to Jesus, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's right. But what do you think Amen. the church is for? Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. We rely on one another. Yeah. When 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 Jesus calls us, the calling ain't easy. It's not easy to respond. A lot of times we react instead of respond. 
And we are going to need little Bentleys to, to lead us back to Jesus. The this, this story only gets be better. Uh, actually, let's go back here. Let's go back here, Bentley and Bartimaeus. Oh, boy. Yes. Uh, uh, stay right there, Jesus. And Bentley and Bartimaeus, come over here. We're going to do that one more time. Uh, G uh, Bartimaeus, sit down again. Sit down. And so he got up. Uh, get his hand, Bentley. So he, he rose, right? But this is what Bar Bartimaeus did. And I think this is, this is astonishing. And I think this is remarkable. Bartimaeus, it says here in verse 50, if you're following along and throwing aside his garment. That means you're, what you're wearing. So hand over the cane to uh, the disciple. Take off your garment and toss it. Pick it up. Pick it up and toss it into the crowd. Just toss it. <laughs> you see... Brothers and sisters of Christ, Bartimaeus, God only knows how long he had been wearing this garment. Yeah. It is said, it is said uh, that in ancient times, outcasts like Bartimaeus, who would purposely put in the outskirts of a city, a large city, in this case Jericho, would put there not only so that they then mix in with the... Uh, normal population but they had a special place in the outskirts of the city so that they could beg but that gave them an identity and and, and it is said that certain garments possess the power to give them that identity Bartimaeus knew who was calling him and that in order for him to go to the master, in order for him to go to the teacher, in order to go, in order for him to go to the king of kings, he needed to dispose of his old garments. Yeah. See, he no longer, he was going to get up and he no longer was going to be. As soon as he was done with, or Jesus was done with him, he was no longer going to be blind Bartimaeus. Right. He was no longer going to have that identity as a yeah. beggar. Yeah. He was no longer going to have that identity of an outcast. He was no longer going to have to live yeah. with the fact that people rejected him and the society yeah. rejected him. He knew who he was going to. Hallelujah. Who was he going to? Yes. Jesus. Jesus. So again, let's lead him back to Jesus, Bentley. Lead him back to, oh, you got hold of his hand. <laughs> He's going to fall over. <laughs> Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, and I know you have a nice, sweet, tender Jesus uh, Savior's uh, Savior voice, okay? Because Jesus was tender, wasn't he? Man, I'm trying to be like Jesus. I, you know, J Darren just came up and, and asked me if I needed a microphone. I said, Darren, I'm loud. My, my voice is loud. <sighs> but I'm trying to be more tender to my wife. I'm trying to be more, you know, speak softer to her and to others around me. Because some of us guys, man, we're rough around the edges, aren't we? <laughs> I only have one voice, man. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. I, yeah, that's awesome. So Jesus answered and said to him, "In your nice, tender, loving Lamb of God, Son of God, Savior, Jesus' voice, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me?" So he asked you that, Bartimaeus. And you know what? Jesus continues to ask all of us, what do you want me to do for you? Do you think he knows what we need? Do you think he knows what we want? But again, as I mentioned earlier, David said, search my heart, O Lord, because we only begin to scratch the surface. We may think we need a new car. We may think we need a, you know, high, you know, enough money to pay for the electric bill. Uh, we're, we're asking for silly stuff. <laughs> what we need to be asking for... You know what? Just having this conversation with with, with uh, some brothers uh, a couple weeks ago, I said, you know what? God's mercy is fresh every morning, ain't it? Yeah. Brand new every morning. Yeah. Is it guaranteed to us? Yeah. yeah, it's guaranteed. Does that mean we should get on our knees and, and beg him, have mercy on me? Just because we know it's 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 here, does that that's that gonna stop me from saying, Jesus, have mercy on me? Have mercy on my little girls. Have mercy on my wife. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy in this for this world that's falling apart. Yeah. I'm going to ask him every day. Mercy. Tell you what, side note. Our kids 
Bentley, Caleb, you guys better be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's nodding his head. He's like, yeah. You guys, for well, what's to come in the next 10, 15, 20 years, these kids, Church of God, better be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. If they're gonna if they're planning on facing the adversity, not only the adversity, but the huh? The people. Persecution. If they're planning on keeping their heads up and not negating or denying their faith, these boys and girls better be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. What are we doing about it? Amen. So we're here to challenge you this morning. Is it okay if I challenge you a little bit? Amen. I'm here to challenge you guys, Church of God. So he asked them, what do you want me to do? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, 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 that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, take off his blindfold, Jesus. Lay your hands on his bald head right there. And he said, go your way. Go your way. Your faith, your faith has made you well. Has made you well. And the Bible says that immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Now Jesus lead the way. And they follow Jesus. You guys follow him. Go. <laughs> and he, this is where you guys put your hands together for our actors. You guys can just you guys can just take your uh, your your props and leave them back there. And then if you want to take them to the blue bag, honey, Milo. Do you want to take them the blue bag over there? Thank you so much. 